Welcome, welcome to Sunday service, guys. You know how we do it here. Usually we get about 1,000 live viewers, 100,000 downloads every single month on Sunday service. But we rarely bring on a guest. And tonight, we actually have a guest. You guys know why we rarely bring on a guest? Because not many guests want to come on our Sunday service show at 7 o'clock on Sunday night. So give <laughs> Zach from RTR. He is the CEO. If you, don't, if you don't look at this man and just it doesn't scream CEO, then I don't know what I don't I don't know what Zach's all about. Zach <laughs> Lee Master also uh, is the definition of Lee Master like the master. Is that where that comes from? Like you're the master of of uh, short term rental of rentals of of turnkey stuff. What what are you the master of? Well, first of all, Pace, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been bugging to be on here for a long time. I love your guys's community, but. I am the master of turnkey rentals, and we, we're doing a lot of cool stuff, especially in the build to rent space. We're excited to talk to your, your guys' community because we know that the people within your community, the sub two, best community out there, that you guys are actually action takers. You guys are, I've never seen a community like you've built where people are doing deals with each other and um, actually taking action. I love it. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. So, yesterday, I was tagged in at least 30 Instagram stories of people all over the country running. 30 different meetups last night, all sub two meetups from California all the way up in, into New England across the whole country. We had 30 different states had a meetup last night. And it's just the, I'm not running them. It's the leaders. It's the people that have been in the program and people that have been in the community are just stand up human beings that are just so welcoming and inviting. And what ends up happening is a lot of these leaders in these individual states end up helping all these new students and these new community members do a ton of deals. They all make a bunch of money together. Some of our students, this is the craziest thing. So like, you know, most mentorships, they have like a duration. They go, okay, well you bought, you buy into a mentorship and you're out after three months or six months or whatever. Our mentorship doesn't end. And so what ends up happening is people end up falling in love with each other and having babies and stuff. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. We legitimately have people getting married and, it's so fun to watch people's children grow up and people's businesses blow up. And you, the number one thing I like hearing is that people say, I don't recognize who I am from three months ago, three years ago, et cetera. It's just a completely different, um, you know, life that they've had by joining the community. And yes, so many people are action takers. Look at Julie Burkhart, one of them. Julie Burkhart says, geez, I missed everyone. G Julie is um, my partner on a 408 unit deal in Charlotte. She is also a private money lender of mine on another deal in um, Illinois. We had a lot of action takers in the side chat today. So I'm excited to talk about the topic. I know Cody, literally, I was at dinner seven minutes ago <laughs> and Cody's texting me. He's like, I'm so excited about this podcast. Like he's so excited about tonight's episode. And, and so am I. We're going to be talking about turnkey rentals and who should be getting into turnkey rentals, why they're good, why they're bad, and um, um, everything in between. I, I'm, I'm curious about what's happening into the turnkey rental space because of interest rates. I'm curious about what your typical client is, um, what that demographic is. Mm. And before we get into that, it was really interesting. I had somebody send me a text message two weeks ago, and they said, Pace, I realized through going through your program, I realized more uh, they, like people learn creative finance, they learn wholesale, they learn fixing and flipping and raising capital and corporate structure and all these amazing things inside of the mentorship. But what they really learn is they learn about themselves. And she says to me two weeks ago, I learned that I am a better support system than an entrepreneur. I'm a weekend investor and I want to buy four to six rentals every single year. And the rest of the time, I want to go support somebody else's vision. That's who I am. I'm a support role. I was like, wow, like I love the fact that you understand that about yourself because what happens is a lot of people see like the Pace Morbys, the Carlos Reyes, the Ryan Pinedas, the Chris Crones, the, all, the, all these people that are out there gallivanting around with a sword and just chopping down deals all the time. And people think that that's what they have to do to be financially secure and financially set is they have to go buy 500 rentals in a year. <laughs> and um, they have to build a whole entire acquisition model and team and all these kind of things. And I think tonight's episode is going to kind of break the 
the thought process on that is, is what I'm thinking. So Zach, welcome to Sunday service. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you so much for hanging out with us at seven o'clock. What time is it where you're at? Well, I'm right now I'm uh, Arizona time too, cause I'm in mountain. So I think, you know, half the year we align and half the yeah. year, uh, we don't, but, um, okay, it's, so late, it's not but... too late. It's not too late, but shout out to all the East coasters tonight. Who's in who's East coast. We've got about 600 people trickling in right now. Who's on the East coast right now, hanging out on the East coast. Thank you guys for for doing that. It's nine o'clock your time. So, um, Zach, give us, uh, give us a two or three minute backstory of like, how did you get into turnkey? And then we'll actually ask the question of what the hell is turnkey? I love it. And I just want to hit on your point too, Pace, that that's so important to just be honest with yourself and kind of what your value is and what type of investor that you ultimately want to be because quite frankly i mean creative finance is awesome we love it and especially over these next few years there's going to be so much opportunity that you have to be active but the reality is is that you know not everyone is super successful in being that entrepreneur and building their own portfolio like if you want to invest in real estate there's a thousand different ways to do it right and as long as you're taking action consistently that's how you be successful but ultimately my background um, has nothing to do with real estate as, as many of us, you know, initially start, I have a background in healthcare. My wife and I did, um, that for a while. I mean, we were optometrists. I was an air force captain for seven years, practiced there, practiced in, uh, Colorado after that. I, I own multiple private practices. Did and you just say you were an optometrist? That's correct. Yeah. So nothing to do with real estate, but, um, isn't that right? so freaking interesting that you could have multiple lifetimes in one lifetime? <laughs> And let me tell you, real estate specifically has allowed us to, and all the things that we do currently in real estate has allowed us to live multiple lives, right? I mean, optometry, that's, that's a grind, you know, eight years of professional school, hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a professional career that we don't even use now. That's kind of a mind mind shift change, but that's a beautiful thing about investing in real estate. You can create lifetimes of income in a short amount of time and do a lot of these different things. We still go out and practice optometry on a volunteer basis, but we don't rely on it for income. Bro, um, that is such an interesting thing because you go to eight years. It wasn't just the eight years of school that you did. It was the buildup of like, I'm going to go to eight years of school was 10 years prior to that planning. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to go to college. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be an opt You know, I'm going to do that. And then you do it for eight years. It becomes who you are. It's your entire identity. And for you guys to break away from that is a, a, a significant reset, a significant like eject button and going, Hey guys, we're going to go reinvent the entire tire identity. I'm I, that's impressive. Yeah. Thank you. It is, and it's definitely a mind shift change, right? We all have those naysayers along the way. Like, what are you doing? Even, even my mother-in-law, you know, bless her heart was like, don't you dare quit optometry. She's a old traditional, um, you know, Chinese woman that is just uh, like healthcare all the way. But anyways, um, I mean, and to be clear though, we invested in real estate, the entire time that we were practicing optometry, it wasn't just a transition, right? And I, I think this is what's important to know. Life Investing in real estate is a lifetime journey. Um, and we're always here to learn more. But we invested in real estate. Even the first house I bought was a duplex. Used a VA loan, lived in half, rented the other half. Anyways, fast forward to kind of where we're at today and what built this business is that we started strategically investing, not in our own backyard, but in different areas where we saw better opportunity. And that really allowed us to catapult our investing experience to the point where we were able to replace our income. And through that experience, we had a lot of friends and family and colleagues that were like, hey, that's interesting. What are you guys are doing? We, we want to invest in real estate as well, um, but we, we need some assistance to do that, right? We don't have the time, the energy, the, the know-how to do that. And so that kind of founded the turnkey aspect, which has really led us to where we're at today. So which I love. I love this because what happened is you saw a demand, you're a business operator and you go, man, my friends, all my homies are basically reaching out to me and going, Hey Zach, like what the hell, man, you guys are, you guys are, you made a departure from your entire identity. You've reinvented yourself, which is pretty cool because of this real estate thing. They've got FOMO going on. Like the feeling of missing out was at an all time high and they go, we need help. How did you do this? And essentially, it sounds like you created an entire business that started by helping your family and friends that then ballooned and blew up into what you guys are currently doing today. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what keeps us going. That's the passion. Okay, cool. So 2022, you guys, essentially, your company builds turnkey rentals for passive investors. Is that correct? That's about half of what we do, um, but that's a big portion of it on the building side specifically, yes. 
Okay, cool. So um, how many houses did you guys build in 2022? So we started a uh, thousand. So, and this is mainly in eighty uh, percent of those is in Florida. Uh, that's that's one of our best markets for. Cody, for did you just reasons. hear what he just said? Yeah, I heard lots of tax write offs for us when we run out of properties to buy next year. Did I mean, you did you hear thing. he said he started a thousand new builds last year? Yes, Zach, that's insane, bro. That's that's a machine. And that's us, our investors, right? That's that's our turnkey investors. Of course, we have our own build going on outside of that, but that's our investors that are coming to partner with us. And what, right. Cody, what you said on the tax side, though, I mean, as this is something where I think the creative finance and the turnkey um, area mesh really well, because if you're an active investor, and as both of you gentlemen are, and Pace, I know that you love this strategy. We've talked about this previously. I've heard you talk about your tax refund you received last year, not only zero tax, but tax refund, right? Um, and a big part of that is actually just the amount of real estate that you purchase, right? If you're an active investor, you should probably qualify for real estate professional and you should absolutely be buying, in my opinion, enough real estate to write off all of your active income, not only for this year, but then pass that forward year after year. And I think that uh, sometimes, I mean, if you're not able to acquire enough of those with all the active deals that you're doing, then maybe, you know, turnkey could be a great option for you to build out your portfolio, diversify in some of these areas, these other locations with a team that's established and take additional tax write-offs, right? Just buy those properties simply to, to scale. That's the name of the game over time. In addition to that, I mean, maybe there's some short-term rental opportunities. If you're not an active investor, that you could still take those accelerated depreciations. But I think that's a key point. Okay, so let's be, let's get into this for a second. Because there's at least one, but we've got 600 people watching right now. Well, I'm just trying to hold back my questions uh, just so we can get into it. <laughs> what the hell, for the people that don't know, is a turnkey rental? It, so it sounds self-explanatory, but you'd be, you're not surprised at this point. You've taught enough people that you know you're not surprised by stuff. But like somebody in here is like, I don't know what turnkey is. What does that mean? And it's an it's a broad, ill-defined term. So yes, let's let's start at the ground level and talk about. And I want to talk about what we mean when we say turnkey because it's it's one of those buzzwords out there. So when we talk about turnkey, turnkey is a property that's been newly built or fully renovated, leased, and professionally managed by our team in a market that we've identified to be a viable investment market area that has landlord friendly legislation, low taxes, future population, economic growth. And so it's really an easy way for someone to acquire a property in a location that they have confidence will be a successful long-term rental for the property. Um, and so this is something that is, you know, an easy way to scale, diversify, get started, um, whatever the case is. That's what we view as a, as a turnkey property. Love it. So how, what is, who does turnkey typically benefit? Turnkey is a great option for if you if you want to be a passive investor, right? If you don't want to be, if you want to be to your point earlier about the um, the gal that wants to be kind of the weekend investor, five to six properties a year, wants to work her W two something along those lines, doesn't want to you know be a full time investor. That's a great way to be passive and still be scaling your portfolio. Well, let us handle all the heavy lifting. You get all the financial benefits of real estate ownership long term, and that is a great way to to get started. Um, and we work across multiple markets to answer this question is in Florida. Um, we work across eight different markets throughout the uh, Midwest and Southeast mainly. And we're always looking for, for the new markets, but people that are, are just getting started. It's also, you know, kind of a, an easy way to have an entry point where you're learning how to invest, not having to take on a lot of risk factors. Someone that wants to easily diversify across multiple different markets or someone that wants to scale in addition to what they're, they're already doing. The, I mean, we even buy pace. I mean, even though we, we do a lot of different things in real estate, we still buy turnkey. A lot of the commercial assets we buy are in, in, for tax purposes, for example, are just, you know, they're turnkey assets that we're buying just sometimes off the MLS or maybe uh, create a finance deal. Love it. So, so um, real estate talks. I really like this question. I think this is a, I don't, I don't know exactly where this comes from. I'm going to take a guess. This is the traditional way of thinking. The, the question he says is, so does turnkey mean you don't have equity? Well, let me, let's, let's lay something out for everybody. 99% of homeowners that buy their houses, buy their houses through a real estate agent, through the MLS, right? Traditional way of purchasing. That's the, where the majority of houses are purchased. Cody, how many of those homeowners 
are buying houses that have equity when they're buying on the MLS? When I worked as a real estate agent for two years in my early 20s, and I would say 100% of the clients I worked with didn't buy a property that had equity. I agree with that. Every house that I've ever watched my wife sell or buy for her buyers are for homeowners that don't have equity. Equity, I, guys, I could hammer home on equity all day long. Equity and I, comes and equity goes, but the cash will always flow. And if you guys look at what happened this year, right? In the beginning of the year, people had a piss ton of equity. Guess what? People's properties have dipped 20% in some markets, 30%. At the end of the day, if the property is still cash flowing, who cares about the equity? Okay. I see a lot of these like very, very safe, I'm afraid type of investors, the Dave Ramsey crowd are like, well, I need to buy a deal at 13 cents on the dollar. Well, that's probably why you've never bought a deal before. Okay. Zach, I would imagine if I'm buying a turnkey rental from you, I'm not always buying a deal with a ton of equity, right? That's not where I'm making my money. I'm making my money in the cash flow and the professionally managed asset that will over time um, bring in cash flow, appreciation, depreciation, all those types of things. Is that correct? I'm so happy this question came up and because this is the like, what's the value, right? Who is this? Who is this right for? Why am I even buying a turnkey? A lot of the creative community, they want to create their own equity, which they should, right? By actually finding those deals. Um, so in the traditional sense, when you're buying a turnkey rental, you would not expect that's right because we've already done the heavy lifting, right? That's how we make our money is doing the rehabs, things like this. When we're selling a turnkey property is that you usually don't expect to come in with significant equity because to your point, you're building wealth over time. You're creating additional cash flow. You're using all the benefits of you know, leverage and um, depreciation, tax benefits, benefits, et cetera. However, um, I would love to talk about some of the build to rent type of stuff where you create immediate equity and there is significant equity. We were reviewing some of the Florida uh, deals in Cape Coral that we've done where there's investors that have six figures of equity position after in 12 to 18 months with the turnkey property that we've built for them where they were able to be creative and do a cash out refinance and pull all of their money back out. So they're net zero into the deal or to sell at a, a large gain, you know, in 1031 or do something along those lines. So there are options and that's where I love to be creative with investors and partner with them to open up some of those opportunities. Okay. So uh, people, you know, we're 18 minutes into this. I want to make sure people have a way to connect with you. What, what, how can people connect with you? Is there a website? Is there something Cody do, did Carly give us a website? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh start, start with, with RTR. RTR I think. Com. Okay. Start with RTR.com. If you guys want to go in as you're listening to Zach right now and you're listening to Q and a, we'll pull up some Q and we'll do some Q and a as well in the side chat also. Okay. Um, Cody, I also know he has a bunch of questions as well. Um, I think turnkey is amazing for a lot of people, right? So I have, I have a student a couple of years ago, she was beating herself up about the fact that she's like, I don't have time to build a whole acquisition team. I don't have time to go out and negotiate with sellers. I don't have time to negotiate with agents. I don't have time to do these things. I'm really busy with all the things I have going on. And I go, well, you could be a turnkey investor. You could just buy deals that other people package up and get their tenants in there. And basically you pay, you pay for that up front. But essentially the way you do your financing can get you into multiple of these deals all year long that you don't have to really worry about that. And you don't have to be a full-time person. And the management is already set up. So you don't have to sit there and have and, and deal with the tenants and all of that kind of stuff. So I would imagine the majority of your clients are those types of people that are saying, I want to be 95% hands-off on owning my real estate. Is that correct? I would say absolutely. I mean, that's who we cater to. A lot of times these are individuals that are working, you know, they have great income. They want to build, still invest in real estate or diversify, especially when we have stock market and thing taking a dump like it is now. But I mean, they still want to invest in real estate, but they don't want to get their hands dirty. They need a, a professional team that's going to assist them in managing and doing all of those things. But I'll also say, I love to see the newer investor because I mean, we're all aware of the analysis paralysis. If you're sitting on the sidelines, you're not doing anything. You looked at the, you have the shiny object syndrome. You look at a thousand different things, which is it, like, we're all guilty of that from time to time. I get it. You have to stay laser focused and just do something and see what that develops into. Turnkey is also, I think, a very good option to, you know, just start, just buy a rental. So many times we've had people that are like, oh, I'm just going to, because they haven't done anything. They went to seminars, whatever the case is, and they buy two or three rental properties. That gives them the mindset and the confidence to get started. 
And then they go out and do their own thing, right? And maybe they come back years later and buy, continue to buy with us, or we hear about them later and they've like scaled just dramatically. Um, but it, it's helped them take the first stepping stone. I think that's that's really crucial in a lot of cases. Okay, so a um, couple of quick fire questions. Sean Baxter says, are your turnkey properties cash flowing when they are purchased? Um, yes, we want to be at an 8 to 12% cash on cash return if, if you're using traditional financing or there's other potential financing methods to use. 100%, we have a, a baseline criteria. Um, we, we want to invest in areas that are obviously positive cash flow because that's what we know our investors as well as us we're looking for. Okay, I think I know the answer to this one. Um, can you start turnkey with no money down? I'm going to say the answer is no, but there is a way that once you're done, you've got it stabilized that you can refinance and get all your money out essentially, right? hundred percent. Yeah. Typically you would need money for a down payment. That doesn't mean it needs to be your money, right? This is where you can be creative within a community and partner with people, um, or on the back end pace to your, your point. Yeah. You can do cash out, refi and keep recycling that money. Once you pull it out, you know, and not have to commit any additional capital. That's the way to just keep continually growing your portfolio. Okay, cool. And what stage, this will lead into my personal question, in what stage do some, does somebody like me, I want to buy a turnkey rental from you, what stage do I get involved in the process? Is it well before you find the land or do you guys already have things that are tur turning and burning that I could jump into with that I already have momentum towards a final build? The answer could be all of the above. Traditionally, when people are buying turnkey, I mean, our company is a little bit different because we have our hands in a lot of different things. We, we are doing, and for the record, we have single family, small and large multifamily, commercial. We have new build and development projects. So, I mean, we have a large diversity of asset classes that we can participate on from the ground up construction or after, after it's completed. Typically, when you think about buying a turnkey property, it's a property that's already been built or renovated. It's got a tenant. It's ready to cash flow from day one when you buy it. Buy it and forget about it. Um, but there are some ways, like we were talking about with the new construction, where you can partner with this and participate in the beginning to take out the you know ground up construction and also learn that process, I think is a great aspect of that. Um, learn it throughout the process. But you can build in that equity. So if you're patient, and you know there are creative ways to get in early with this. Okay, so Vlad, Vlad K, I want to I want to clear this up for you, my friend. Accredited investors, okay, accredited investors. Why is that important? It's incredibly off base, and that doesn't. I'm, that's not a criticism. I'm just letting you know that accredited investors really have nothing to do with this, unless, okay, unless I came and I created a fund or I created a group of, of investors called a fund, and I went out to the open public and I said, hey guys. I want to gather all of our money together into a fund and I want to go and buy a ton of properties through Zach's company. Start with RTR.com. I'm going to make a fund. Yes. At that point, in order for you to invest in my fund and be a partner in my fund, depending on the type of fund, a reg D, right? There's, there's, in, there's two types of reg Ds, right? 506B, 506C. Depending on which one, some of them only allow accredited investors. Okay, but if you're talking about an individual buying a property, you don't have to be accredited. Okay, you you could be a, a small time investor just starting out. You do not have to be accredited to buy a property. The only time you ever have to be accredited is if you are investing in somebody else's fund that requires you to be accredited. Okay, hopefully that clears that up. Okay. Um, so the answer would be no, unless somebody like me comes along, right? That you guys all know about the multi, all, all the uh, sub two students are going to be partners with me on some big multifamily in 2023. That fund is a reg CF fund, a regulation crowd fund, which allows me to raise $5 million of non accredited investor funds and take as little as a thousand dollars each. Okay, so your minimum investment, no credit check. Um, you don't have to be accredited. I have, I don't even need to have met you before. And you can invest as small as a thousand dollars into one of my funds. Those types of things, those types of funds, also don't require you to be accredited. Okay, so you just have to know whoever's fund. Again, you're not in a fund in, in, when you're doing an accredited investment. That means you're giving somebody else your money into a fund and they will then take that money 
and invest that money on your behalf because you are trusting them with that money to pull it into a fund. Okay. So um, hopefully that makes sense. All right. Now, the question I have, okay, because I've never bought a turnkey property. Every single property we own is found by us or found by somebody in our world. 99% of everything we've bought is sub two and seller finance. Okay. So like our audience goes, wait, like I know how easy sub two and seller finance is. I don't need a credit check. I don't need all this stuff. How easy is it for somebody like me who I have unverified? I mean, I have income, but like this year I will show $0 on my tax returns. Can I still get a turnkey property or do I need to go get a W-2? There's plenty of different ways to finance or purchase uh, any property, whether it's turnkey or not. And I think this is actually where your community and your army pace. That's why you guys are out there taking over in the sub two um, space or the creative finance space is because um, your investors are being creative in the different ways that they can acquire real estate. I would say turnkey or otherwise, just to look at the different ways that you can acquire a property. Generally speaking, most people are putting you know 10 to 20 percent down using traditional financing or 25 if it's a if it's a single family. And so in that case, if you're, you're talking about traditional financing, yeah, I mean, you, you need your uh, two years tax return of having self-employment or a W-2, but there's plenty of non-QM lenders out there, right? I mean, there's plenty of non -QM, lenders. Non-QM, guys. Non-QM means qualifying mortgage. Non-QM. It means they don't care about you as the individual. They care, they care about the deal, the asset, the house, all right? There's lots of non-QM lenders out there. All right. Uh, like my investor loan is one of them. My investor loan.com. Uh, Tanya Turner is another really great one. You guys have a lending institution. I'm sure that you work with hand in hand for clients that are like me that are basically non, non W2 able and uh, hor horrible on my tax returns. It shows that I have a, a net loss this year. So I'm not going to be bankable if I walk into Bank of America or Chase, but I could go to a non-QM loan that you guys can connect me with and I can go get one of these deals, right? 100%. Yeah. And just to further that point on the taxes, like, and, and I'm right there with you. I love that, uh, you know, the way that you're, you're building your business and continuing to expand your portfolio without having to give it all away to Uncle Sam, because that's, I think that's the goal for everyone. But I mean, with this, this is the last year in 2022 where we have 100% bonus depreciation, right? So think about this. If you're in a pinch to buy a property, even though you're out there and you've done a lot on the creative finance side, like if you just need to buy a property for a tax purpose, I mean, and you have two weeks to do it before the end of the year because you do have to own it in 2022, um, then maybe that's something where a turnkey would Do you be have something fit. available that I could buy right now? 100%. Yep. Yeah. Um, we always I was we looking have at them last night. 50 to 60 properties available at any given point in time that are ready. Cody, to you want to buy one before the end of the year? Yeah, I like I like these duplexes that you have, but I don't know if those are ready to, to, to buy. And you said that there's, you know, other ones that might be available that aren't on your site. So, you know, we might be missing those. Where are them pocket listings at? Where are them pocket deals? Why, where, why are you hiding stuff from us, Zach? Come on. <laughs> no, bro. we're hiding it from the general public. But we like the uh, we like the sub two community so much that um, I mean, if you just got, if you just mentor, mention that you're from, you know, the, the community with Pace or Cody or uh, Sub Two community, um, I've specifically not Cody Sperber though. They won't give you if you <laughs> mention anything about Cody Sperber. Absolutely, shout out Cody this, Sperber by the way, the, the better Cody, and um, <laughs> so that's that's who we want to know about. But for your community, I've already instructed my team. Like, look, these guys are action takers. They're out there, you know, making deals happen. These these guys are serious, right? Like that. That's very obvious. Um, and everyone knows that about everyone that's part of your community. But we, we have a, a separate list that we've actually held uh, properties not available to the general public. In addition to that, we're going to be providing a thousand dollar closing cost credit to anyone from your community. So if what? you're from a thousand dollar closing cost. Cody, credit, let's buy one right now. I'm, I'm down. I, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Why are you dragging your feet, bro? Let's freaking like, what do we got to have a partnership meeting about this? What's up? <laughs> Get that no, cost so study. here, here, here's my, here's my, uh, my question, Zach. So as Cody, you know, stop, stop overthinking everything. Let's just do this, bro. What do you, what are you trying to ask questions for? I'm, I'm not overthinking. I'm thinking on buying a lot of them, but my question, cause on, on a few, like, yeah, like that's going to be fine. But on a lot of them, my, my thing is Zach, I would love to buy 
a lot more properties turnkey because we can't always source the right type of deals that I like to buy. And I think the turnkey model is really interesting. Here's where my biggest hang up has been to date and why I haven't bought properties out of the state of Arizona and Pace has is the problems are going to come to me and I have to deal with the problems of those properties that have those issues like property management. Oh, we don't have a handyman there. Oh, you know, is the property management company that you have? Is it the same one within all of these states? Is it uh, different partner vendors that you partner with to manage these properties in these markets? How is Cody not going to have to deal with a problem property because the vendor that's being managing the property decides they don't want to manage it anymore. And now Cody has to figure out in this town in Florida that I've never heard of and been to now I need to find someone there that can go take care of all of my problems. So I can't, you know, so I could sleep good at night. That's my thing. And dude, I've, I've totally been there. Um, and it's taken, it's taken 15 years to tr get a efficient system in place. Um, and there is that always to some degree. I mean, it can be like herding cats when you have a bunch of different rentals in a bunch of different areas, but it's all about having the right system in place. So to be very specific though, these are local property management teams that we've sourced and vetted um and scale to adhere to our standards of not only how management needs to be done but very fundamentally like how do you screen tenants okay do they need to make three times monthly rent you know are you accepting um anyone that has a bankruptcy or what's you know th certain things like this so there's a lot of different things and we're calling multiple uh previous landlords not just the current one that may want to get rid of them things like this so the point is is that everyone's all the managerial teams are following the same system and they should be, even if you have a few properties in Florida and Texas and Missouri or wh whatever the case is, they're all following the same process. So it's very efficient in terms of how they're managing. You still, it still can create noise though. Like your managers are still reporting to you. Um, For sure. We're, we're also acting as that filter though too, right? I mean, we're the idea here. Most people, they want the mailbox money where they own the property and forget about it. But you still need to sometimes check in with the man. I understand the realities of real estate and there's no such thing as really mailbox money. The money comes in. But like even with the properties we have in Arizona, we have a property manager that manages all of them. And then we have an asset manager that then is like the one that handles the initial problems. And then the only really annoying problems then get to my attention. And I'm OK with that because that's like it's part of the business and it, it is an investment and it has they have to be managed. And that's fine. It's just what that's where I wanted to ask that was like how that team looked so that at least there's a filtering mechanism that's happening on that, on that ground level. Um, my second question is around uh, the actual like repairs. Cause like, this is a thing that I've seen, you know, for, I've, I've heard stories from other companies. I've, I've actually, you know, heard where people, they, they go turnkey and then they're in a situation where it's like, they have to fix something at the property and a repair that should be $200 gets marked up so much that they're paying a thousand dollars for a $200 repair. But since they don't have the resources to help resolve that, they're just stuck with what they got. So that's the, uh, that's my, my second question. Yeah. And I would say apply that to owning property out of state in general, right? Whether it's turnkey or not, like if you're an out of state owner, yeah. How do you have accountability for your local managerial teams mm -hmm. to know that they're not gouging yep. you on the repairs? Uh, you know, and so we have the same sort of thing. We have the standard. We want people to cash flow excellent. Our average investor is buying 15 to 20 properties um, over the course of multiple years. They're here to build a portfolio uh, and they're only going to come back and confidently do that if they're having a good experience. Now, that's not to say issues never come up. I mean, that's part of real estate, right? Real estate, there's always going to be issues. It's how are those issues managed and how much of that do I have to manage? That's the question always, right? 100%. You don't have to manage anything. I take care of everything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Ingrid. Hi. Hi. Um, Zach, welcome Ingrid to the show. She had a question. She's a mastermind student. She's also a big leader of ours. And so I, she's one of the few people I would give her the link to come in here. Ingrid, thank you for participating. Welcome. Hi, Zach. Hi, thank you. Uh, one point of clarity that I was seeing in the chats, by the way, just to throw out turnkey in what you're saying is different than the turnkey and what we're seeing in some of the markets where I'm literally buying uh, sub two, um, one of my biggest sub two to buy and own uh, here in Gilbert, Arizona. And the house is in immaculate condition. Um, I'm sure Cody's mad at me that I didn't sell it to him because I'm, I'm mad. I'm sitting here. <laughs> you tag me on Instagram. 
And I'm like, she only well, how wants dare to she? send us 55 plus deals, only deals that smell like mothballs. Those are the ones she sends to us. The freak, Ingrid. <laughs> Hey, Kyle's only sends me mobile home, so I'm just getting you <laughs> back through or getting her back through you. <laughs> um, so, um, Ingrid, you had a question about bonus depreciation. Yeah. So um, I've heard this twice now about what what we're allowed to do in terms of depreciation. I've heard step down or something is happening in the next few years, like 10 percent or something like that is happening. 20 percent. Yeah. So they're going from. Um, like it, let's, let's say for example, I go buy a plane. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you go buy a plane for $5 million, you can get a yeah. $5 million tax deduction this uh -huh. year, a hundred percent accelerated depreciation in your first uh -huh. year. Yeah. Going forward, it's going to be 80%. Okay. It doesn't mean you can't get the other 20%. It just means you can't get the other 20% in this year. Right. So you'll get 80% of it this year. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. And then does okay. it step down beyond that? Uh-huh. Yeah. Ingrid, let me, let me step in and kind of apply to like um, a typical real estate transaction, uh, mm -hmm. for example. So let's say you buy a house or otherwise you just buy a house. Like one of your creative finance deals, if you own it, like, you know, seller finance sub two, you own it. You should also accelerate to or you could accelerate to appreciate those. But just for simpli simplistic purposes, let's say you buy a hundred thousand dollar house. What you do is you get a cost segregation study, st study done. And what this does is takes all of the items in the house that are not going to last 27 and a half years, your normal depreciation, and allows you to take the bonus part of it in, in year one. Typically, what we're seeing um, is anywhere between 20 to some, somewhere is up as high as 50%. I kind of like to use, for simple math, like a 30% range. So if you buy a $100,000 house, you can kind of back of the napkin say, and that you take out land out of that. Um, but we'll just use a hundred thousand dollar house. We'll say roughly thirty thousand dollars or thirty percent is what you can take in your one. So if you had a thirty thousand dollar gain from a flip or something like this, or even just income uh, from any source, if you're a real estate professional, that's a hundred percent write off. You're taking that in your year one. You still get the rest of your seventy percent depreciation over the course of the next twenty seven and a half years, and then you know depreciation is still recapturable. And so maybe in that scenario, when you sell it, you 1031 or something like this. I don't know if I gave you too much. She's, I, she's, she's heard me talk about depreciation 17,000 hours. So she must have a specific question. Well, because um, by the end of this year, uh, I will have uh, potentially bought two properties for the sole purpose of keeping them and renting them out uh -huh. um, long term. The other ones I have are not, don't have that longer term. So I, I I wasn't sure I have to talk to my CPA, but I wasn't sure about depreciation because of the recapture issue. But like Ingrid, uh, you don't need to worry about the D, the D, the recapture if two things happen. Mm -hmm. what, tell me one of them. What's one thing that you can do to keep to not worry about the d recapture? 1031. Yeah. 1031. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially somebody like you, you're not you're not going to retire right now. Right. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to sit here and go, I want to sell this property and take all my cash out. You're not ready for that. So you're right. going to 1031 um, for the next probably 20 years. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where your big chunks of cash will come from is when you go and refinance. Right. As interest rates go down, your equity goes up. You'll go, man, there's four hundred thousand dollars on this million dollar Gilbert house that I should have sold to Pace. Right. Mm -hmm. And and you'll pull that 400 grand out. And that, as you already know, is, is, is not taxable because it's not income. It's actually incurring another debt. Mm -hmm. Another way you can do this is through trust structure, right? So you can set up trust structure properly. D Dustin, my CPA is coming in tomorrow mm. to our private sub two community to specifically talk about this because it's kind of the end, end of the year. Mm -hmm. But you're like what Zach is talking about with the cost segregation. Here's what's cool about Dustin. I bought this property in Atlanta like three years ago. It was 1.1 million, single family home, 1.1 million. Bought at seller finance. I bought it from um, one of our other students. I, do you know the deal? I've talked yeah. about it. Maurice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bought it from Maurice. I did a cost seg study on that one property. And then Dustin went and used that same cost seg study on over 20 properties. And the average was 40% was my tax, my, my tax benefit because of that one property. So if you have a really good CPA that's creative and understands the laws, like Dustin does, that one property that you just bought for a million bucks, sub two, 
-huh. You can do a cost seg study on that. You, the company we use is costsegauthority.com. Mm. Okay. I like it when, when Ingrid says, mm, that means that we taught her something. One, I'm all at this point in the game, I'm trying to find one thing that I can teach Ingrid every <laughs> once in a while. Okay. So, um, costsegauthority.com, that's who we use. Then they do a cost seg on your million dollar property, could be between 1500 and 3000 bucks. Okay. They're going to do a, 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 a full-on report. That report ends up going to the IRS. Your CPA, if they're smart, will be able to use that same cost seg store study for multiple properties in that year. Okay. And a lot of people don't know that. In fact, there's CPAs that go, wait, what? That's not possible. I go, no, just instead of saying that's not possible, just say, I'm not experienced to enough to know that. Thank you for teaching me that pace. That would and be a better... So if your CPA doesn't know that, just say you're a knucklehead, go talk to Dustin and have Dustin tell him. I appreciate it. I, I know that this house has like a pool, a spa, like a barbecue area, like three new air conditioners. Like it has. What are you going to do with it? Um, so Sounds like a house that Cody should be living in that you should have sold him. <laughs> um, we plan on renting it out by room and I'm doing this cool concept with Marlon because mm -hmm. Marla needs a place to stay, but we've been talking about helping other people level up their businesses, their mind, mm. their, um, like a mastermind another, house. yeah, it's a mastermind house. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, did yeah. that in my early twenties. It's, it's the best. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, then we should talk to you about it. Um, so while it's not a, a crazy strategy, it's just, you charge them a little bit more than normal rent because it's like, yo, you get to be around us. So that's what you're paying. And then that's what it is. And it's, it actually worked out. I mean, I was super happy with how it worked out. I house hacked my first five years of my twenties doing that, which is other entrepreneurs. And we yeah. were, we want to have like more intimate or private mindset events, like once a quarter, um, to also kind of you know, have a place where everyone feels comfortable about have, you know, Pace's house is amazing, but we can't borrow that all the time. So just seeing about, you know, what can we do on our own and, and um, have those types of place. It's so beautiful Pace. I like, I can't wait to stop rubbing it in, dude. You already <laughs> didn't sell the deal to us. You're <laughs> <laughs> but um, so Christine from California was teaching me a little bit about cost seg and that like the more features your house has the more it helps your cost segregation yeah because the mo like more broken shit you'll have <laughs> yeah right. and to hit on pace's point though that was about the cpa applying that to multiple deals that's huge because that also means you're saving money not having to pay for a full-on study multiple multiple times um and that just shows having yeah having a having an experienced um cpa is is huge i think also i just want to mention on the the timing though i don't know if i fully answered your question previously ingrid this year is is 100 bonus Next year, 80, 60, 40, 20. Um, but it does pass forward. So like if you're in Pace's example, and he's probably got a negative um, the balance that the IRS, uh, he's reporting every year. And so that actually goes, it passes forward to next year. So that's why it's important for this year and really next year when it's at 180%, like let's take as much of this as we can to pay it forward in future years. Yeah, yeah. so like that property I just bought in Springfield, the mm -hmm. $20 million, 265 unit, I only needed like 8 million of that purchase to be utilized. And so when we do a cost seg, um, study on that, I'll have this massive thing and I'll carry that loss forward into next year, which will be great. So I'll probably not have to, technically, I won't have to buy another property for tax purposes probably until April or so. So my first four months essentially of all my active income or all my income from all my businesses um, will essentially be offset from that purchase carrying forward. And it not only knocked out every, I thought I was gonna have to buy a stupid plane. I didn't want to buy a plane. I want to buy a, another Prius. I'm excited about the 2023 Prius. I was like looking to buy this $23,000 car. And then the CPA is like, you know what? If you can't buy another big property, you might have to go buy a jet. I'm like, I, anyway, so not only did it wipe all that out, but it wiped out the first four years or uh, next four months of the beginning of the year. So your big million dollar property you just bought sub two, that's mm -hmm. going to be a tasty depreciation situation. And so tomorrow I actually have Dustin coming into the mentorship. So come in, it's at one o'clock Arizona time. You can watch the replay if you're busy, but um, he's going to, he's going to come in and talk about that stuff tomorrow. Got it. 
Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and Pace, I'm just waiting to all, like I just moved my 401k into that 401k trust called an EQRP. Um, waiting to invest with Pace for your multifamily. I know. Dude, you know that re the reg CF is so freaking challenging. It's mm -hmm. a whole thing. It's a whole mm -hmm. freaking thing. We, we, we ended up like, you know, that whole big 500 bundle of apartment units that we were going to buy with like Pace's Ridge and all that kind of stuff. That's the one I want. I know I do too. I, I had to break the whole situation up. I had to go close 192 of them with only accredited investors. And then I had to put the Pace's Ridge on, on hold and we had to extend escrow because I'm still trying to get the reg CF all the way done. You are a you are an accredited investor, though. Technically, I am. Yes, I have figured that out. I mean, you just say yes. You don't have to say technically yes. You just say <laughs> yes. I'm a badass accredited investor. <laughs> yeah, Ingrid, I, feel like I feel like I'm living a, on the edge on that. And we all, I, I literally, I show C Cody was at my house the other day. Okay, and I opened up my bank account. Cody, did I have money in my bank account? Not really. I had a negative $3,000 balance in my bank account. So, and I am an accredited investor. So we're always living on the edge. I overfunded, um, we overfunded like three days beforehand. And then Tony went, she's like, before she went to the, the Dominican Republic, she set up some auto payments. And I was like, I overspent out of one account. She set up auto payments while she was gone. It was my fault, not hers. And I went upside down in my bank account. But I'm like, this is what accredited investors look like, is that we constantly are deploying capital into more deals. Boom, 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 boom. So you're doing the right thing. Awesome. Well, thank you. I mean, you can be an investor and take 10% equity on this million dollar house if you'd like. I Text me about it. I'll, I'll talk to you about it. I'd love to. All right, cool. All right. You're the best. Thanks. Congrats, Ingrid. All right. See you um, anyway, she had a great question. So I thought I'd bring her up here and she's such an amazing, sweet, awesome leader. So back to the question, Cody's trying to fight me on ask, yeah, asking I got, the I question. Got, I got more questions. I got I'm more like, how questions. do we just, how do I, so I go to start with rtr.com. I go in there. Is there like a series of how, uh, like a list of houses I can pick from and choose from? And there's like down payments already out there or what? Well, the first thing we want to do is, I mean, we want to connect with you. I have a great team of investment strategists who are going to actually take the time out of their day to learn about your investing, right? That's what we want to do. Everyone is in a different position, has different goals, timelines, resources, um, strategies. So we want to spend the time to learn about that and then make sure that we answer all of your questions and also look at all the, the investment opportunities. Okay. So Cody, that would be definitely a Cody thing that would happen. Not me. I would not be getting on the phone. So Start with rtr.com. Cody goes and books a call. Is that what happens on that website? Yep. We schedule you with uh, one of our investment strategists. Once we know that you're from your community, the sub two community, um, we're happy to show you the additional deals that we've pulled away from the general public. Um, but after that, yeah, it's a matter of looking at inventory and uh, financing options or purchase options. Cody, what do you want to buy? You want to buy a duplex? What are you trying to do? Yeah, I, I like the, I was looking at some of the ones you had for sale just on your, on your website, that spreadsheet you had like those duplex. I love all the new build stuff. Obviously I'm, I'm assuming you wouldn't have anything that's finishing construction that we could buy and close on before the year's over. That's like a duplex. Um, or maybe I'm wrong. We but do. Like no, we have a lot of new construction that's completed. It's just, you know, if you're, if you're trying to come into a significant immediate equity, I mean, some of these things, guys, there's still meat on the bones here where things are still 20, $30,000 of equity. Like, you know, the, well, it, we it, don't worry about, we don't worry about equity, bro. We, the, we let our tenants flow, pay like down with the equity. interest rates. Like that's my biggest thing is like, as long as it's going to be able to cash flow well, like the, the, most of the stuff that Pace and I are buying, we're looking at it over 10 plus years anyways, unless it strategically makes sense to 1031 it at some point in that time right. frame. It just, mm -hmm. that's, we just want to make sure it's cash flowing during that time, get the tax benefits and that's really it. So yeah. Zach, what about, stuff. so Julie, one of my mm -hmm. mastermind students, investor, partner, she's amazing. This lady, <laughs> I, I don't know why this is so cool to me, but this lady owns a freaking river. Okay. Like this lady, this lady's dope. Probably one of the best dressed women I've ever met in my life as well. Julie is freaking amazing. So she's saying there's no multifamily on the site. Do you guys have available multifamily or stuff coming up? What if, hypothetically, I've got a Reg CF right now has $5 million of my students' capital in it, and I have $5 million in a fund right now to deploy. Could I go and buy a $25 million or a $15 million or whatever piece of multifamily from you guys? Do you guys have anything available? 
I mean, so those are two separate uh, <laughs> type of transactions. We we do work with credit investors and funds to some degree to buy, take down big deals. Generally, I mean, that's on a case by case basis, right? We do have multifamily consistently. Even right now, there are some multifamily on the site. You're probably talking about two to four units. Also, though, we we do not throw out if there's, you know, we consistently operate in that small to midsize multifamily. We're not just going to to showcase an eight or 12 unit because we get so many questions from newer investors that would never be able to buy those in the anyways. But the short yeah. answer is yes, we have those. Please reach out, schedule a time, let our team, let my team know that you're interested in those. Be happy to present them to you. Cody, are you going to do this call? Cause you know, I won't be doing this call. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Yeah, no, I think, I, I mean, so here's, I'll, I'll give what, what my thoughts are too, is like when I look at like some of the, these new build areas, I'm like, it would be great to find if you have like a whole community of like lots that you're building on, it's like, Hey, can we just swipe 10 duplexes in the same community and just, you know, be able to get a, a chunk of them at a time? Like, cause I don't know if that's something you guys normally do as well. And I have a follow-up question to that, but I'll, I'll hold that. Yeah. I mean, we're not doing any full on community developments. Would it be possible to take down 10 to 20 lots that are adjacent or contiguous? Yeah, it, it would. And so you could absolutely do something along those lines. And I, I have some case studies and, you know, numbers mm -hmm. we can run through if, if time allows, if you'd like to. So Cody, yeah, for sure. yes. I want to make sure you I get your questions answered because I want to talk to Zach about something else that other people probably don't know Zach does. Yep. In order for Zach to build this stuff, Zach has to buy land. You know what I'm saying? Like Zach's doing mm -hmm. deals. Yep. He has a buy box. People can sell stuff to him and Scott. Scott is on your team, right, Zach? Yes, sir. Okay, so we I want to get to that. I'll be and we only have 20, we only have 30 minutes. So what is your Cody brain telling us that we need to know right now? I mean, I'm just asking questions that I think everyone should should be asking themselves as well. Like on the totally. the, the last one was a selfish one for sure, because I'm just curious. But the uh on the uh the markets that you're choosing to invest in, like how how are you, you know, encouraging people which market to invest in? Because you're in eight different markets and say I'm, you know, I'm just a new investor. Like how do I choose what makes sense? Because in some of these they're they're similar down payments, right? Obviously like Ohio is like some of the lower down payment amounts that you need, but some of these markets generally 50, 60, 70, 80 grand. Like how does someone make a decision on what makes sense to invest in since it's turnkey anyways, like how how do you make sense of that? No, that's a great question because you know, we get asked all the time, right? And it's like, where do I start um, or mm -hmm. which market? Well, the markets do vary a little bit based on price points. Um, so we want to make sure it's, it matches uh, the criteria of the investor, mm -hmm. their price points and whatnot. But also, I, I do encourage people, or our, our philosophy is you should be diversified across a few different markets. I mean, that kind of speaks to your point earlier about you know not wanting to have, you need to have good managerial t systems in place to not make this chaotic and distract from other things, which, which we do. But I think there is a value to be diversified across a few different markets um, following the same process. So it may not matter if say you're starting in Ohio or Missouri or Indiana um, because they're very similar, unless there's something in particular that appeals to you. But say you want duplex new construction in an area that has strong rental demand and, you know, year after year appreciation for the past 15 years, maybe, I mean, those sort of markets are going to be important for someone that doesn't want to invest in the Midwest where they, they don't have that potential for large appreciation. Um, so we, we try to make it an individualistic type of approach. So how much time, let's say that I'm somebody in the side chat, we got 700 people watching right now live and we'll end up having a hundred thousand people download this over the next 30 days. Wh what amount of time does your team give somebody that books a call Let's say they go to startwithrtr.com. They look at something. They see a duplex, kind of like Cody. He's got. He's all excited about some duplex, some new build duplex. He's all pumped about it. <laughs> so he get he books a call with you guys. Is it is this a fifteen minute phone call? Is this a thirty minute phone call? How much time do we usually get? Uh, there's thirty minutes for the initial consultation, and as much time as they need beyond that. Communication is extremely important when you're investing out of state. Um, and you have a lot of questions, right? So we'll spend as much time. You you have a dedicated investment strategist that you're working with. You also have access to myself once you start investing. Um, but we have a whole team here to support you that will give you as much time as as you need if you're if you're taking action, right? Like we want to see we want to work with people that are serious and take action. And that's why I'm so excited to talk to your community because I don't, I truly believe there's no one else out there that's doing as many deals collectively and as a whole and that's as engaged. As your guys' community pace, it's astonishing.
Yeah, I, I do. I, I do agree with that. It's astonishing is a good word for that. That is for sure. It's um, impressive. I mean, it's, and it's what's cool. cool is like Ingrid, right? Like we, we have more people doing deals in our side chat than we, than other people have do in their live community. Like legitimately, this is, uh, this is what you have right now is you have probably 400 sub two students in the side chat. If you're a sub two student, shout out sub two and tell everybody where you're at, by the way. Um, and then if you're not a sub two student, say no in the side chat, right? So we have a good blend. This is on YouTube. Um, but the sub two students are insane. Like the greatest action takers of all time. So I, they jump in. Here's what, here's the other, here's what I would be doing too. Like depending on who I am, I saw a couple of comments in the side chat about size, like down payment size. Guys, get creative, all right? Get creative. Stop for a moment and say, if I had to figure out how to get my hands on a turnkey property with no money out of my pocket, how would I do that, right? There, there's literally 700 people in here live. You mean to tell me, especially the sub two students, I'd be looking at the sub two students and going, because our average sub two student, we've taken a survey, the average sub two student has $72,000. That's the average sub two student, $72,000 in money to deploy into deals. Okay. Deployable cash, $72,000 is the average. Some of them have 2 million, right? Some of them have more. Some of them have $2,000, right? But the blend is $72,000. So yeah, there's a lot of people that could come in and go, Hey, let's team up. Let's get three or four of us together and go buy two or three of these things. Let's create a partnership, right? Um, if I was sitting there saying, I want to be more of a passive investor, I would probably look at that. I would look at how do I find two people, three people. Um, my securities attorney has always said, you can always partner up to five people without going and getting a fund because five people could legitimately say they all have kind of individual roles and responsibilities in that partnership that you know thwart it from being an actual security. Five people get together, you put $300,000 together, you guys could go freaking rain some some damage you guys could go get a whole bunch of these properties which would be cool um so just a suggestion for people in the side chat like nisha saying yes right jake says yes i'm down right um myron says bro you're changing my family's life appreciate you i wonder if you're he's myron's talking to me he did send me a text today but i don't know who knows um but that that's really what you, if I was in the side chat and I'm worried about down payments, that's the way I would look at it is to say, how do two or three of us get together and go buy one of these deals? Right. So do you ever have partnerships, people coming in as like two or three people coming in and buying some of these properties together? All the time. And that's the best way to do it. I mean, right. If you can't take it down on your own um, or just to even be creative to do more partnerships are huge. Absolutely. Okay. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, this is okay, Myron. You that Myron, when you say I'm talking about you, Pace, and Jabs too, that means you weren't talking about me. You were talking about Jabs. I love Jabs too. I don't need all the credit. Jabs is dope. Um, okay, cool. This is cool. Uh, Jammer Five. That's so weird. I don't know where your mom came up with that name, Jammer Five, but that's tell your mom shout out. It's a good name. Pace, I never find people who have even $30,000, let alone 72,000. If you and I had a conversation and you sat next to me and you heard the conversations and the way I talk to people and I find out how much money they have, it would be a completely different conversation. Completely Pace, different conversation. Can I jump in on this too? Yes, please. When you were doing deals and you're actively out there making things happen and you're talking about what you're doing, ensuring what you're doing, it's astonishing how many people have money that is just sitting there in the bank and they don't know what to do with it. And quite frankly, they don't, they don't want to figure out what to do with it. Right. Um, and so if you're just actively doing deals and talking about that, friends, family, colleagues, there, there's a lot of capital out there that you can partner with people on. I, you know, that was one of my things when I was just starting to, how to learning how to raise private capital. I thought nobody had money because I didn't have money. And um, I would put my brain in everybody else's head. I was just like, well, man, how am I going to raise money? Nobody has money. Like nobody has a hundred thousand laying around. And then you get older and you start doing deals and you start realizing, holy moly, the majority of the people that you are around on a daily basis have 20 grand, 30 grand, 50 grand, 200 grand, five. And then you run into people um, that have millions of dollars that you wouldn't even know. Millions of dollars. I was teaching a class two years ago. Um, for another investor, calls me up and goes, hey, can you come teach a class in my office? I go, yeah, no problem. 
and there was um, a group of like 30 people. And I just ask a series of different, I ask different questions than most people do now. Right. But when I was first started, I didn't even know to ask some these questions, but I would ask people, um, what's your biggest problem? Why aren't you investing? And I would really kind of stick the forks to him a little bit. And this guy I'm talking to after the class is all done, I go, what's your biggest problem? You know, why aren't you investing more? Blah, blah, blah. He goes, well, you know, I don't know what to do with my money. Well, how much money do you have? He's like, I have $3.5 million. And I'm like, and you're not investing? He's like, no, I don't, nobody, like, I don't have time to look for deals. I'm a contractor. I'm so busy all day long. I don't know where to put my money. And I'm like, this is so crazy to me. Some, there's a group of 30 people that I just taught about raising private capital. And that was literally the class I was teaching, how to raise private capital for this other guy. 29 people had no idea that one of the guys in that room had $3.5 million in cash. Guys, it, it's all around you. You just, you're not asking the right question. Sometimes you're just starting and so you're not exuding confidence. So the smart thing for you guys to do is get around people that have some confidence and partner with them and JV and get around the energy of activity and investors start falling from the, the bushes. It's crazy what happens. Um, so um, while while we have you, because I'm the, Cody, the, you're setting a call. You're going to get a call with these guys, right? Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, we I mean, enough, we'll do we have we enough time, like, to buy a property before the end of the year, like, legitimately? Do you guys? Or... Yeah, Zach. You got man. We can close tomorrow if you want. Banks are open. Let's go. Yeah, perfect. What what market? What market? I mean, I, I will save that for the call. What 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 other questions do you want to ask, Pace? I no, I like that. I like that question. I want to. So, I, I know Zach will give somebody. Zach's team will give other people individual advice. But what does Zach get excited? What, what market does Zach personally get excited about? When it comes to cash flow, let's talk cash flow. Like obviously, excusing appreciation states specifically where that's the driving strategy. The the cash flow markets that get you excited for the you know upcoming years i like the markets where you get both you have a little bit of you know your cake and eat it too where you get cash flow um and you also have strong rental appreciation so that cash flow dramatically increases year after year um you know some markets we saw like cape coral florida 22 percent rental increase from last year that's a 22 percent increase in just rents i mean that's the roi on that is like triple digit at that point from buying it a year ago, but I like markets where you have strong cash flow, um, and a good shot at appreciation, um, and areas where you can be creative to on the, on the back end too, where you potentially have long term and short term exit strategies. Um, I just keep talking about Florida because that is where we are the most active. We work in the Pensacola, so Panhandle area, middle uh, mid Florida, so like Ocala, um, um, uh, Point Siena, uh, that's right in between uh, Tampa and Orlando. Uh, and then Southwest Florida is, is an area that we're super, super bullish on right now. Um, and then some other areas we like are like outside of Houston, some of the areas that we build in um, where we also see strong appreciation. But I mean, those those markets are just extremely strong right now and continually growing, um, even with everything that's going on right now, you know, economically and with interest rates like they're not slowing down. People are moving there and it's, it's not stopping. So I like those areas. Got yeah, it. I do, too. You know, the people are always talking to me about Ohio and Iowa. I'm still to this day not sure if those are two different states. Are those, are the, is Iowa the capital of Ohio? I'm, I'm just joking, guys. For people, I'm, I'm just joking. But for me, Someone's I don't, gonna be I, like, what? I don't get excited about a market that's not appreciating, right? Just because I can get into it super cheap and the cash flow is decent, I don't get excited about a market that doesn't ha also have the upside of the, the of really big appreciation. People are moving heavy to Florida. People are moving heavy to Texas. Like you guys see the migration patterns. It They're heavy moving over to these areas. And the panhandle of Florida is incredibly affordable still. So you kind of get this amazing, perfect blend of both worlds of like Ohio, uh, Iowa, like not th that low of prices, but still affordable, good growth, which means great appreciation. So you get that, you get that freaking perfect balance. Um, so Cody, the ones that you said you liked, the ones that are like the duplex, the QD duplexes that you liked, where do, do, does Zach's website say where they're located? Uh, I mean, the ones on there, which it sounds like there's other ones that aren't listed on there, but these are to be built, it looks like. There's uh, yeah, one those in, are the Lehigh Acres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
We need yes. to let's get dude. I want here's what I want to do. You it's the same thing we did with like Prime Corp. Do you know um Steve Harward from Prime Corporate? We sure do, and we use him quite a bit. I mean, he's, he's the he's best out the there. Best, dude. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unbelievable. I so I promoted this LLC company uh, a couple of years ago, like two and a half years ago. And I didn't promote them to make money. I wasn't do I wasn't there was no affiliate, but I had 400 students go over to this company. I'm not gonna say it out out outward. My students know who it is. And this is about two and a half years ago. And the experience was so bad. And I promise, I just, you know, I was, I was a new coach. I didn't know, right. This company came in, they were like, Hey, I want to show you guys what we can do. I go, Oh man, this is amazing value add to my, my community. This is amazing. They come in 400 people go and sign up with them. I still, to this day, and in, in the side chat, you will see somebody from two and a half years ago go, yeah, Pace, I'm not, I love you, but I also am not happy that you pushed me over to that company. Um, that you'll see it. Somebody will say something. So I told myself from that go point going forward, I wasn't going to um, promote a company that I have not been associated with. I have not done deals with. I have not vetted. I haven't been friends with for at least multiple, multiple months. And so like Steve Harward, I meet Steve Harward in January of 2020. And I told Steve, he's like, dude, your community, everybody talks about your community and like what you're doing as a leader in this, in, in this industry please let me get in front of your people. I'll bring the greatest service to them. I go, nope, you and I need to do business first. You and I need to at least be friends for six months. I need to be in your ecosphere. And so same thing with you and I, Zach, like you and I have now been in each other's ecospheres for, for a good amount of time. I want, I told Cody, I go, bro, let's buy a couple of these deals with Zach. Let's legitimize this relationship. Let's go do some, some deals and let's talk about our experience with Zach on YouTube. And let's talk about the experience inside of sub two. So people can see exactly what we go through and um I, i'm cody let's freaking let's go get a freaking deal bro what are you what are you dragging your feet for i i just don't even know what the deals are zach you'll have to let us know what are the what the what the deals are what, what would you, you got to book a call at start start right, with yeah, rtr yeah, yeah. we'll book a call and get on and talk with your team on can it. you book a call right now i want to see can he book a call right now on the website i'm sure he can <laughs> let's do it cody do a screen share let's do let's let's have let's have you book the call come on one sec here you got this one gigabyte per second internet now and now you can sh share a screen dude like your internet can handle this okay dude, it, i mean it might be dangerous i'm scared to test it <laughs> oh here's here's Let's jeff jeff is um uh one of my students he'd been in the program for over two years when he first came in the mentorship he was in papua new guinea as a missionary and he would come into my zooms and he would be on the other side of the country to be like four o'clock in the morning his or no one o'clock in the morning his time. Okay, cool. So you're on the site. And shout out to Jeff. Um, we I've talked to Jeff many years ago, and uh, that that's awesome. You're doing cool things, guy. Yeah, he's he's cool. He moved to Arizona, doing deals. Good leader. I'm take it off just while I type in my phone number, so I don't have people. Come on, dog. Hey, guys, Martin. here's Cody. Hey, guys, pull out your pen and paper. I'm going to give you Cody's phone number. Um, so this is a good one. Philip Frazier says, so why is he pushing Zach when he hasn't done work with him? LOL. Well, Philip, you saw multiple people in my community have vetted and verified that Zach is the shit. So there's your answer. Okay. And also I've been in, I've been in Zach's world for a, a good amount of time. We've, we've met through bigger pockets. We've, that was, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Spoke um, on stage there at the event together. I yeah. mean, um, and Steve, I mean, going back to Steve too, I think, I don't know if it was him or someone else that, that introduced this, like when, when you're out there doing big things and, and doing things right and you have communities and by the way, like go and Google us, just like Google sub two, I mean, on, on just review that type of thing. Obviously we want to know that you're part of the paces community to get access to the, those type of deals. But I mean, you connect with people that are, are doing good things and, um, that's quite on, you know, when people introduce you to other people that are uh, just a players out there like Steve. I mean, that's how you really build businesses. Would you agree pace? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. You, 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 the, the stuff get, it's interesting. Um, Cody and I've had people do bad things to us in business, just like everybody has. But what's interesting about those people is they don't last long. You know, they, some, I think the longest I've ever seen these bad actors um, stick around is like two years and then they just kind of dissipate and they're gone. And so people that have a long track history and everybody has good things to say about them, guys, you people, bad people get weeded out really, really fast.
very, very fast. Yep. Did you book a call, Cody? I did. I but you didn't want to show everybody your phone number? Yeah, I, I can share my screen again. I did actually. Okay, so you got you got I am. information. Okay, I just Ours. I want to I want to get one before the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and I'm, might and I'm to... also curious. Like, I, I the the Reg CF that we're doing, I'll probably end up converting or or upgrading our Reg CF to a Reg A next year, and raising a much larger amount of capital. This might be fun for us to take a portion of that Reg A and deploy into a good amount of um, turnkey stuff with you, especially if we have with. I think we have like $200 million on a waiting list for our, our fund, which is pretty cool. So That's we have the ability now. to go raise a good amount of capital to do good stuff. So I'd love to, you know, do a handful of deals with you before we go raise a bunch of capital. Um, now there's a lot of people in, in the side chat, 700 people watching right now. They all find deals, right? A ton of them find land deals and they're like, I don't know what to do with it. Is there a short and sweet, buy box that everybody guys by the way i'm telling you to get out your freaking pen and paper because he's going to tell you his buy box and if i don't tell you to get your pen and paper out you're going to say pace can you please repeat the, the buy box again because i wasn't ready for the buy box okay get your crayons out take them from your daughter that's sitting next to you drawing in her coloring book just take her crayons out of her hand and get ready for these notes okay what is a great place for me to be looking for or running into land? What is my minimum size? And what are the things I should kind of like, I know there's some other things like people should be building a relationship with you long-term, especially with you as a buyer. If you guys started a thousand doors last year, you're a significant buyer. So People need to build a relationship with you and get more finite information. Totally understand that. But is there surface level? Hey, here's five areas. Here's the size of land we want. No flood zone. Nothing next to a circle K. I, you know, is there something that you guys have that is pretty easy to write down with crayons? So here's a buy box. And I'll say this, that, um, you know, a good creative way to actually start, like if you actually take over the land, if, if you have a seller finance land deal, um, where you actually are on here, here's where you can do the creative finance on the build to rent space, working with us specifically. If you find land where you have seller financing on it, um, are the construction lenders that we work with that are leveraging our experience to give you the best terms when you're coming in and partnering with us, you may be zero money into that deal. If you can seller finance the land and work with us to build it, and you can still build six figure equity positions. So, I mean, that's a create that that's mixing the strategy right there. And I, I love that and using creative financing, but if you want to sell the land to us, uh, you know, or a lot of these uh, building teams, generally speaking, we need an 8,000 square foot minimum lot for single family that moves up to 10,000 for, um, duplex. We do not buy in flood zones. People. Okay. So the, people are writing this down right now. If it's a single, it's a, if it's a single family it has to be 8,000 square feet minimum. Okay. What if somebody sends something to you that's 7,995? 7, is the answer no? It, potentially. I mean, it's not a hard cut, but generally speaking, that is a cutoff. I mean, okay, cool. So, guys, the answer is yeah. the 8,000 is a cutoff. Don't be a knucklehead. Look for 8,000 plus. Okay. Then 10,000 is the cutoff for duplexes. Um, 10,000 is for duplexes. Now, Zach, if I'm brand new and I'm listening to this for the first time, should I be making sure I, I should, let's say that a broker or somebody sends a wholesaler or I, I run into land, I'm driving by, it says land available on owner finance. I look up the, the property. Should I be calling the city or should I be calling the zoning or permits and planning department and saying, hey, how is this property zoned before I decide to send this over to you? Uh, please, please do because uh, we don't, we want residential, right? And we need to see if it's even zoned appropriately. That's a huge thing. We don't want any previous we don't want any liens on the property, right? Because that's quite common in a lot of areas um, to, to have a property be lien. Also check environmental factors. That's another thing. Some areas have that where you can look it up publicly. Sometimes it takes taking a phone, making a phone call to the city. A lot of there's, there's these really cute burrowing owls in Cape Coral uh, that are a total pain in the ass to deal with. And they take, you know, a year to get them out of there. So make sure there's no environmental factors. This isn't, that's not a joke. No joke, man. So the, 
like I have this one lot I bought um, that there's like this whole community of like 50 and they just keep coming. They keep moving on and I'm just going to let it be a habitat for owls. But wow, um, please look into that. Um, you should have a turnkey zoo or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, there you go. <laughs> this so you could pet them. Uh, and so, cute. so what, what market? So someone doesn't send you a deal in nor in North Dakota and you're like, I don't buy land here to build here or like what markets would you be open to getting deals sent to you? And the areas that we're building in, um, the Carolinas <laughs> actually no scratch that what I would be interested in moving into this next year, Houston, um, Southwest Florida, Ocala, Point Siena, and, um, Panhandle Pens uh, Pensacola area. Those are the main areas that we're going to be very active building in for this this next year. Not not really interested in in land in other parts. So yeah, please um, please don't send that. Yeah, definitely, guys. Here's the thing: for all you Californians, I'm going to sound really rude when I say this. Nobody wants to buy in California. Okay. The only people that want to buy in California are people that already live in California. Okay. And you got a job there. You got family there. You guys. Nobody wants to buy there. It's not fun. If I'm a developer, I'm developing anywhere but California, okay? I'm moving to places that are less expensive. The government likes me. They want me to make money. They're not going to tax me and ha hemorrhage me. They're going to make the permit process a lot easier. I imagine the Florida permitting process is actually somewhat pretty relaxed. Is that correct? It generally relaxed. Um, there's a lot of building going on, but uh, it's light years different from California. Absolutely. Right. So you got, it's a little bit of a bottleneck because of obviously so many buildings going on and that's, that's, that's great. That means that a lot of people want to build there. So guys, California, not a lot of people are trying to buy rentals there. Okay. So um, if you guys are in California and you're saying, man, this sucks. Why isn't Zach buying land in, in California? Well, guys, you know, you can find land in these areas, these buy boxes, just as easy as you can driving down the road in California and seeing something. Virtually finding these deals is just as easy as, as doing them in your backyard. So spend the time where, like you said, Houston outlying areas. Is there a specific part of town that you really want, like Katy, Texas, or where would you want to be? You know, what one interesting th thing that we found is there's a lot of opportunity, what we would consider secondary markets. And these are areas within uh, an hour kind of commute radius to a large metropolitan area. Um, so I would almost look at that as a, uh, I mean, especially in areas that have strong population growth. I, some of these cities are expanding uh, quite dramatically. So I kind of use that as a quick math, an hour commute distance. So 50, 60 miles um, with, within a uh, you know, commute to a large metropolitan like Houston. And that's, that's you know, could be a lot of potential there. Love it. L absolutely love it. it you know, there was somebody earlier was like, I can't find money. The other day, I literally asked Rob Ringlehan a question. And Rob, I, I asked him the question. He goes, uh, I got, I go, Rob, how much money do you have in your bank account just sitting in there in saving, savings account? And he tells me. And I'm like, go spend that money right now. Go deploy that money. Go get it working for you. Okay. Same thing with all of you guys. You should not be having, you should not have cash just sitting there rotting in your bank account. Go put it into a cash flowing asset team up with each other spend time with each other uh rob ringlehan you know what rob's doing he's actually funding somebody else's deal jonathan um out of texas funding his deal and rob is getting a 33 percent cash on cash return by being the lender on that deal and, and jving guys this is why we do these things live so you guys can hang out be around the sub two community okay um myron says rob are you lending i don't i think he should have a little bit more money left um, okay, so Derek, this is a great one. We've talked about this for 401ks. You, if you have a self-directed, you guys, you guys can go and fund these deals all day long. Okay, you guys can go in and get into these deals all day long. And in fact, um, I've never had a 401k. I've never had a self-directed or any of that kind of stuff. But I actually am getting a 401k this year just so I can um, work. Do you know Greg Hurleen from uh, Horizon Trust? Have you met him? Uh, you, you introduced me, I think, a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, Greg, yeah, Greg is um, so he owns a company called Horizon Trust. And so they help people that have 401ks and, and IRAs to get them into a place that they can invest their retirement savings, right? Or their entire retirement funds. Do you have a lot of people that are buying turnkey rentals through their retirement accounts? 
yeah and i'm like you pace i uh i don't like the government telling me when and how to use my money so have not set up a 401k but for people that have those from their employer or previous employer yeah all the time you're using a solo 401k self-directed ira um establish it with horizon first right that's the first step and then you can there's all sorts of you know different options to invest it non-recourse lenders available so a lot of people are doing that especially as they're looking to diversify their retirement vehicles right now yeah um so julie burkhart um she she really likes greg because or, or horizon trust because she had she didn't know this but she had a previous retirement account that she thought was basically not dead but she was like basically i can't do anything with it and horizon trust was like no you can take that and you can self-direct that and you can put it into deals so Julie is like, she's like, oh my gosh, Horizon Trust got all this money accessible to me so I could actually go make money with them. Um, so same thing, guys. Go, uh, I think Greg, it's fine. let me find Greg's email so you guys can reach out to him directly for the, for the, he comes into the sub two community frequently and talks to the sub two community, but let me just make sure that um, you guys get his information because there are some of you guys that have IRAs and 401ks and you're, you didn't know that you could go buy turnkey rentals with your stuff and your um, real estate can actually grow tax-free as long as you keep that money in your retirement account. It can grow tax-free, which is pretty freaking cool. Okay. Well, Pace um, is pulling that up. How do, how do people send those? I had a couple people that had posted, okay, so I have the criteria. Now, how do I send those to you, Zach? You want to just give them your personal cell and just start getting a bunch of texts? Do you have someone on your team, I'm assuming, you want them to connect with? Yeah, I want to make sure they get responses. Um, and uh, I can't get blown up too much. So the best thing to do, guys, is just email info at renttoretirement.com. Um, we do have an 800 number, 800-311-6781. Um, and Alexis will be answering the phone and responding back to you. And we have a team. We have a land acquisitions team for building if you want to talk with an investment strategist, we'll put you in touch with them to, to go through your criteria. If you want to look at inventory, obviously, please mention you're from Pace's community. Um, we have special things going on for you guys. And um, yeah, we'd love to help you. I think this was dope. People, people are really like pumped up about this. This is great. I think Cody's excited about this. I'm excited about it just to, you know, I mean, the thing for me is, if you if you haven't been able to tell Zach, I have a little bit different risk tolerance level than like Pace has on like you know deals that we feel comfortable being in versus not being comfortable being in. And so my dilemma has been, I I want to have a, another source of being able to just buy more deals to you know obviously get the cash flow and appreciation long term, but the tax benefits you know and be able to look at it every quarter and say okay where what are we on track for for the year and make sure I'm buying enough real estate through the sources that we already buy through, but then being able to kind of supplement on top of that, you know, buying some turnkey deals as well. So we don't have to depend on finding the exactly perfect deals through our own sources as well. hundred percent. That's what it's all about is scalability, you know, and having multiple, I think all of us is during our, you know, investing journey. I mean, it's at some point you can't buy enough deals, right? Even if you're really actively out there investing, creating fine, creative finance deals, finding these off market deals. Like sometimes it's nice just to easily have a source to just buy a standard property, you know, take the accelerated depreciation, especially in a good market. Cause often that's, that's really where the, you know, the value add comes just being in the right place at the right time where we see continual rent appreciations and market appreciations. But I mean, our, our goal is just to help people with whatever whatever their goals are. We have a lot of different asset classes and some of the best markets. And this is an easy way to scale or diversify. Um, and yeah, I think. Yeah, uh, I, I what I'm excited about is that for the last two, three years, I've been telling Cody, hey, come, pro come buy property with me all over the country. Right. And Cody has a different risk tolerance than I do. Right. And so what happens is Cody's like, nope, I don't want to own anything outside of the state. So. The majority of my Arizona real estate I own with Cody, right? But none of my outside of the Arizona outside of Arizona real estate is with Cody because I'm out buying real estate all over the country, and this is, gives Cody and I an opportunity to go own real estate together all over the country because you guys have systems and processes that allow us to get into something that Cody feels comfortable with as the um, what's the word I'm looking for integrator <laughs> risk, risk risk the conservative I guess there you go. 
There you go. So a couple of people ask Greg Herlean at yahoo.com is at horizon trust. That's who um, Julie Burkhart uses. A lot of other people are using Greg Herlean at yahoo.com. That's his email address. That sounds funny, but it is, that is his email address. Um, I'm glad it's not AOL though. I'm glad, I'm glad it's at least Yahoo, but Greg Herlean at yahoo.com. Um, send him an email. If you guys have re um, retirement funds that you have not converted to a self-directed He'll help you out with, with that. Super easy. This is my final question of the night. This is a good question. Maybe there's one more. Jordan Clark says, hey, um, Zach, if you're going to buy a deal for me, can I assign it to you or do I have to double close it um, in or for whatever lending situations you have going on? Assignment's just fine. And guys, I'm happy to pay assignment fees, right? If, if it all makes sense, if the deal's there, then there's no reason to, to double close assignments. Absolutely fine. A, a investor friendly turnkey rental guy. This is freaking amazing. I freaking love it. Um, okay. A lot of valuable information. A lot of people super love this, bro. A lot of people are taking notes. I saw in the side chat, people were like, I'm writing this down. This is amazing. A couple of people joined an hour late and they said in the first 10 seconds of joining, they were scribbling down notes. So this has been a really good, helpful one. Um, okay. Now, Besnick, who I, I really like Besnick, but always with these funny questions, Besnick. Zach, what about Massachusetts? Doesn't work for us. Um, landlord, you know, legislation, taxes, price points, cash flow. It's just not, not a market for us. Uh, Jabs Carter, here's a good one. Should we continue to use Airbnb as an exit since they're cracking down on Airbnbs in Dallas, Texas? So, Jabs, I'm going to tell you, we are going to be doing a lot more midterm rental training inside of Sub2. So I look forward to helping bring more value to you on the midterm rental stuff. Um, Tanisha, all of our, you know, the heart of Sub2, I call her. Tanisha will be coming in and bringing in some, some midterm rental training. I currently am setting up a midterm rental in Texas City, Texas. And uh, we'll walk you guys through the process of that and what the numbers look like. I am converting a handful of my Airbnbs in um, Atlanta and in Dallas into midterm rentals. In fact, Jabs, I think you have done a meetup at one of my seller finance deals in Rowlett, Texas. That property in Rowlett, that uh, neighborhood hates me so bad. They've sent me like 15 different letters over three years. And I finally am like, okay, I'll relent and I'll go midterm. So I'm going midterm on that and a handful of other properties in other areas that are getting cracked down on. So Airbnbs are not going away. They have definitely felt a hit. People that say otherwise are not telling you the truth. They have definitely felt a hit, just like a lot of other things. Um, but midterm rental doesn't go away, right? Or here's another one that doesn't go away. A lot of people that we're going to be bringing in a ton of value for this. I have been um, putting in the last six months, I put 12 properties in my portfolio that I am uh, leasing to a sober living facility. They don't own the property. I'm leasing it to them. The rent rate is doubled and I have no responsibility for repairs, which is a great thing. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't come with a lot of risk, but it does tell you that I'm bringing in a lot more cash flow and I will be bringing a lot more sober living education to the mentorship jabs as we do more and more and more of it. So I would look at sober living. I would network with sober living people. People Google it, literally jabs tonight on your iPhone. Um, go on there and go DFW or Dallas sober living facilities. And tomorrow call five of them and say, Hey, I want to network with you guys. I want to bring you houses to you guys. And that is um, your tenant for those types of properties. Cody, do you have anything else for Zach? Cause you know me, I could go all night long. Uh, no, I don't think so right now. I mean, I'm obviously going to get on the call with you, but um, you know, I think, I think we're going to be ready to rock and, you know, get some properties going here. Um, I, one of my, one of my things, but this could be, I think we should just make some YouTube videos during the process pace on like, as we go through the the process on, you know, buying turnkey. Um, I think that would be fun just for a follow-up for the community as well. So I don't have any questions right now. Yeah. I, th I think we do a whole follow-up. I think C Cody, if possible, I don't think you should record the whole, like document the whole thing, but I think it would be smart for you to do a recording of the call that you have with them take a little bit of it for a future video to go, Hey, this is how long my call was. This is what the inventory was. This is why I chose this property. Pace and I deployed this much money. Here's what our interest rate was. And we're going to continue to do more and more and more of these over time and uh, show people that this is actually for a lot of people that are the weekend investors or people that are like, 
I, I bought four sub twos, four sub twos this year and two seller finance. But my goal was to buy 14 properties. Like we have a, a student that their goal in 2023 is to buy 20 rentals. Okay. Well, what happens if they only buy 15 sub two and seller finance deals, right? They might want to supplement and diversify into five um, turnkeys, right? Where they don't have to worry about them. They're already ma managed professionally and up and going, which is pretty freaking cool. Zach, you're dope, dude. Thank you. Guys, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to walk through that with you. I think that would be huge to do just case studies. I love going yeah. through that stuff. And again, I can't say this enough. I've spoken to hundreds of people, thousands of people in different groups. No one's out there doing stuff like you guys in, in your communities engaged and they take action. I love it. Thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much. Uh, tomorrow for Wholesale Hotline live, 5 p.m., we have Cody Sanchez coming into Wholesale Hotline tomorrow, 5 p.m. Arizona time, same YouTube channel. So all 700 of you guys should make sure you guys are there tomorrow. Cody Sanchez is probably going to try and fight with me lovingly. She's going to fight with me and say that buying a business is better than buying a property because she doesn't understand that with sub two and seller finance, we actually get a lot of zero down deals. She thinks that she can outpace me in creative finance real estate versus creative finance business opportunities and acquiring people's businesses. So we're going to go head to head tomorrow on Wholesale Hotline. It should be a lot of fun and uh, look forward to seeing you guys all there. Cody, I love that your internet works. You're the best. Later, Zach. Oh, oh, oh.